Welcome to Got It Right. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest tonight is Luciano Medina. He is a running coach for the Queens Distance Runners, and he is a professor of mathematics for NYU School of Engineering. I first heard of Luciano from the captain of the Queens Distance Runners. That's Luciano Medina. He lives in Brooklyn, and he proves that you can live somewhere else in, besides Queens and be a member. He's, oh, he's one of our coaches. Oh. I'm thrilled to have Luciano, also known as Beast, do the Gotta Run TV show. Thank you for having me here. Great. It's a pleasure. Thank, let's get started, as I do with all my shows, to introducing yourself to our audience. For example, tell us where you were born, a little bit about your childhood. Oh, I was born in the uh, Dominican Republic. I uh, immigrated here when I was uh, eight years old uh, with my parents and let's say my older brother. I have uh, two younger sisters. And when I moved here, I came uh, to Brooklyn, uh, East New York, and spent almost well, most of my life there in Brooklyn, East New York, around 20 years before, um, let's say, uh, moving let's say, to Queens and then back at Brooklyn, actually. Oh, so you're back, back in Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Yes, after a short stint in Queens. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, as a child, were you very active? Actually, I was very active because I, let's say, had the pleasure of growing up in the Dominican Republic in a rather, let's say, not poor but traditional setting where you didn't have to have shoes and things like that and kids can just run around in the backyard and run into the rivers uh -huh. and just have a lot of fun all the time. When I first came here, actually, I, I ran a race. I ran uh, a race. I think it was here in the in the Bronx. I'm not even sure exactly, mm -hmm. but I ran a little race and I beat everyone by like a very very good distance. It's one of those, I guess, kids races. But really, when you were eight used, or nine years old. Yeah, I got a little trophy there, and I was very very excited. I think it was the first race I won, and maybe maybe the last race I won actually. <laughs> <laughs> So you went to high school here then? Yes, and I went to Thomas Jefferson High School okay. uh, up in East New York, uh, and I had a really good experience there. Um, so four years there? Four years there. I got to participate in teams like the chess team, uh, the math team, and I ran track. I ran my, track and cross country over there. My goodness, those are interesting combinations chest, math, and, and athletics. Yes. Not yes. the usual. So where, what do you attribute your, your talent, your mathematical talents from? Did that from your parents? From Actually, I have one uncle who's really, really good at math that my family always compares me to. Okay. Uh, they say, you are, you are identical to him. Um, but no one in the, my family is particularly uh, an academic person, let's say. Uh -huh. So I think I just found the interest, uh, I think, on, on my own, and then it evolved more when I got to uh, high school, to the high school level. The high school level. Mm -hmm. But usually there's sometimes one person or an event that nurtures that. Mm -hmm. Was there something in your life that, mm -hmm. that really encouraged you to, to study? Yeah, I, uh, uh, in high school, I have one mentor, I would say. His name is Mr. Ritchie, who Unfortunately, passed uh, away at a very young age, a little bit younger than I am now, around mm -hmm. 28 years old from leukemia. And he would take me all the time, let's say, to his office to either, you know, to, show, uh, to teach me a little bit of math or prepare me for the math team competition. It was through him that a math team was actually made at the, you know, at the high school. And it was for the first time there was a math, math team. And we actually, we just studied there with him all the time and tried to... He, it was like a small group of, uh, of us, mm -hmm. and he tried to get us to do very, very well, let's say, on the state exams, in which of, some of us actually got perfect scores on them. So it was, it was really phenomenal because at my high school, the, let's say mathematics was not the strongest suit. The uh, school exams were probably much easier than what you were solving for math teams. So you yes. went out at a competition. With yes, the... went to the competitions, competed like against Stuyvesant, Brooklyn Tech, and schools oh, okay. like Those that. are the name schools. Yeah, the, oh, yeah, the big schools. Oh, they're, they're good. They're good. good. How did you guys do? 
compared uh, to actually it did they, they, I think let's say that they were very very uh, well trained as compared to us okay yeah I don't know exactly how we did but we had lots of fun okay well that yeah. was having fun and at the same time you were in the uh, you the, said the cross country team the cross country team and I ran track and field um, with uh, my coach was Coach Martin, and he actually influenced me greatly into running. And to this day, I you you know I think when when I run, I think of my coach. Is I think about high school teachers and okay. coaches have like a very long uh, term effect or impact okay. on on okay. your life. So you're saying in, in your case, the mm -hmm. primarily motivators were your teachers, of Thomas Jefferson. Yes, it speaks mm -hmm. very highly. Yes. And you just lucked out the right high school. Or your parents moved to the right neighborhood. You know, is that what happened? <laughs> I think that was just very lucky for, with the teachers there. They were very, very caring. They were very, very caring, and you know, just treated us as their kids. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give kids today or parents that you know that want their kids to succeed in the sciences like you did? First of all, I will say that parents uh, has a, have a very, very uh, large influence on the kids. So they have to try to motivate their kids to pursue, uh, let's say, fields in the sciences by taking them to, like, to libraries, showing them movies or shows or doing actually activities. Usually for, I have a, a godson, I, for his birthday, I, um, I gave him a bag of chips. And the bag of chips actually contained um, a whole bunch of scientific experiments. Mm -hmm. So it's chips, but at the same time, the bag contains little experiments so, so he can do with his father. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of activities would be nice. Okay, so family is important here. Yeah, I would say that the influence of the youngsters are based okay. on the family. Okay, because you know, that's mm -hmm. the big controversy. How do yeah. we get more kids to do better in reading, math, mm -hmm. and how to get more kids, especially people of color, Latinos, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more involved in the sciences? Yeah, I think that, that it comes from the environment, the environment. If their environment, if the kids see that that's a fun thing to do, it's an okay thing to do, then they probably were going to do it too. Okay. So well, the environment is important. Yeah? I was going to say, you'd probably be a good role model because, like mm -hmm. I said, there aren't that many Latino mathematicians. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I myself don't know of any Dominican uh, uh, mathematician. I, I've searched and I'm very happy. Actually, I'm the first one in my family to have a doctor who actually go to graduate school. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And not just in just math, but just in general. In general. Mm -hmm. But I understand that uh, you go out to the schools and do some uh, speaking. Yes. I go out to, I've gone to, let's say, my old high school. It's, so it's... Um, the neighborhood I grew up was a very tough neighborhood, let's say, very, very tough neighborhood. Well, this uh, is Brooklyn. Brooklyn is yeah, tough all over, Brooklyn, really. Well, yeah, it depends. It depends where you are. But Brooklyn, very tough. I go to either the high schools or I went to Washington Heights. Okay, yes, yes. And, go to the, uh, and I've spoken over there to the young, youngsters, try to motivate them. Uh, and act as a role model for them. Okay, but mm -hmm. how would they, the schools find you? Is this some through a program or? Yeah, usually through a program, someone, maybe I spoke to someone and they told me, oh, you should come to the school and speak to our kids. Okay, so the NYU has a program that people can reach or how mm. would they find you to come and invite you to their school? I, I actually, it's just from, I think more through the running community. Oh, really? <laughs> through the running community, I've met people and we've discussed, we talked and then exchange information and through the running community you surprise who you who, who's running next to you oh you know? fantastic yeah. oh great yeah. and now you had to decide what college how did that happen coming from thomas jefferson high school it's not a lot of students will go into a very very good school I, I wanted to go to polytechnic university at that time that was that was my first choice and so I applied to that one as my number one choice or my dream choice, and then like Brooklyn College or the other or city schools. And I got accepted to Polytechnic through a special program called the HEOP program, the Higher Education Opportunity Program, which gives you an opportunity for, let's say, first time, first year, let's say, uh, uh, first generation graduates mm -hmm. to go into, uh, let's say, uh, a college and they support you well, financially and by giving you tutoring and uh, it's a very, very good program. Basically, I got to be nurtured again. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And what did you study in, uh, at, at Brooklyn Polytech? I studied uh, electrical engineering. I graduated with a bachelor's in electrical engineering. Well, that's a tough uh, major. 
Oh, yeah, yeah actually, it is, it is very it, tough. Any I would engineering say, is tough. Yes, yeah, it's very, very tough. Even <coughs> though my math skills were good at the high school level, at the university level, uh, that I, had a, I had a tough time. I had okay. a very tough time, let's say. Okay. So uh, after college, you had to decide on your first job or career. Uh, how, what was the process for that? Yes. The university has a lot of car, uh, career fairs, say every two, every year. And at the time, I, I would consider myself a very good speaker or I guess a salesman because I would not say that my GPA or academic performance were, were, was, were great. But I, I was able to sell myself and I got a job in an electrical contracting company called mm -hmm. EJ Electric. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually right down Long Island City and I worked there for about a year in very, very interesting projects like uh, electrical installation for the Mets Stadium or the Yankee Stadium and oh, even really? the Bank of America building uh -huh, uh -huh. across uh, Bryan Park. I got to, uh, I was there before actually it was built. I was down there in the basement and checking, you know, how the electrical installation was progressing. But somehow you went back to school because you're now a professor of mathematics. So yes. something must have happened. I'm definitely more an academic person. I always uh, just have my books with me. If I was to go on vacation, the first thing I'd probably pack are my books and my papers. And I received an opportunity but at the university. They offered to all concurrently. I was offered by athletics uh, an opportunity to coach. Um, let's say the cross country team, and at the same time, I was offered an adjunct position at the university, which allowed me also to cover the say the tuition at, at that time. So I was I, I took that. Oh instead. wow! Yeah, you, I, I just you didn't hesitate. I actually yeah didn't hesitate because you wanted to, to turn a business suit into an academic. Suit. <laughs> well, I actually even as an undergraduate, I always loved mathematics a lot, uh, and one significant person that really. Sh show me what mathematics was, was my PhD advisor, which uh, his name is Professor Yi Seng Yang. And I met him uh, as an undergraduate and I became his uh, undergraduate research student. And as an undergraduate, I had the opportunity to publish actually my, uh, a paper with him and really ex uh, see what mathematical research is mm -hmm. about. And I just got uh, an opportunity to come back to it. And yeah, I was very happy to be able to go back to graduate school. Excellent, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. teach mathematics for the, uh, I guess the Brooklyn branch of NYU. Yes, at the School of Engineering. The School mm -hmm. of Engineering. Mm -hmm. So now, now that you have your PhD, that means you have your own students? Yes, I have my own students. Well, I don't have any doc, uh, doctoral students yet, no, no PhD students. You have to work your way up there. It takes time. Of course, of It course. takes time in terms of uh, basically your understanding of the field. I think that once my research is a little more stronger, my foundation a little more stronger, then I will actually have problems to offer f for other PhD students. Ah, uh, oh, to I work see. Got to have solvable problems for them. Yeah, yeah. It should be solvable. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, yes. I usually mentor a group of students during the summer. They are all undergraduate research students through uh, research uh, internships. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you mentor them in, in, in terms of what? Um, basically, what opened my lab to them, that's what we call it. Uh, so that they can come and experience and see what kind of research I am doing. And so I have uh, basic problems, like computational problems, uh -huh. that they can get involved in. So usually they get to uh, experience what mathematical research is oh, okay. as well. Now you're at the School of Engineering, so mm -hmm. it's probably, probably a very practical yeah, very solving practical. thing. Yeah, very applied <coughs> problems, things in uh, tumor growth modeling. Oh, in medical field. Yeah, in medical field. I do, I have my, actually, th that problem I, was my undergraduate research problem. So I kind of continue to work on it uh, a little bit. And other problems, let's say, in engineering, uh, which are called MEMS, microelectrical mechanical systems, or uh -huh. actuators. So things that they are already familiar with, or chemical oscillators, things like okay. that. So a whole bunch of things well, that they already know. Well, students also interested in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how can they can make the next big uh, Apple product? You know, things are getting yes. smaller and smaller. Yes. The whole special techno technological field of getting things that small. Yeah. Uh, do you get involved in those things yet? No, no. I mean, I, 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 my knowledge is limited. Let's say well, everybody' knowledge is limited. Not, there's a lot to know, but in, I don't particularly work on the technology side. It's 
still I'm working more a little bit more theoretical and then using the, a little bit of theory to uh, to see uh, where it has a little bit of application. So I usually take like some model for some physical phenomenon and try to uh, do some mathematical studies on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all this time you're running. And all this you, time you never I'm gave up running. No, I've never gave up running. Run every fact, morning. In fact, you said you were the coach mm -hmm. when you went back to school for the, the course history team. Yes. And that's because you had a relationship because you were there before and they already knew of your work ethic. That's right, that's right. What was the most successful event that you have as a running coach? Actually, we didn't have a women's team. So to get a women's team finally, let's say, together, I was very happy because at the school of engineering, they actually, they, there were not that many women. So I was very happy to finally have a, a women's team. So you helped find that? Yeah, helped find, uh, recruit some women. And the men team, actually I grew the team size, very, uh, it was pretty good numbers. And I was very happy to be able to see the progress of my runners every year. So that's basically what I boast most about is like wh whatever, uh, whatever level you will come in, every semester or every month actually, every month you will see your improvement. So that's what I kept track of. See, I was very, very happy with that. Uh, and being a mathematician, you probably had a spreadsheet to keep no, track of things. Of course, of course. <laughs> Actually, no, nowadays, everybody puts it on their smartphone. So yeah, I guess you can just track it now. Track it, yeah. Yeah, online, oh, okay. online But, you know, let's jump a little bit because, mm -hmm. as I mentioned at the opener, you're a running coach mm -hmm. for a relatively new team, the Queen's Distance Runners. Yes. So how did that happen? I'm the, their long distance coach, so I met, first of all, how, I was part of Westside before, and then I switched to Queens Distance when I met uh, Kevin at the track, when at this time I was training in Queens. So I met Kevin and I was looking to be part of a team that, where I can actually train with them. Uh, the Westside team, was uh, their runners train more, let's say, in the Bronx, I believe. So I met Kevin and we started training and it, he has a lot of energy, as you know, I think uh -huh. everybody knows, a person with a lot of energy and we joined the team, actually me and my, my partner, we joined the team. Okay, yeah. so he got two for one there? He got say? two for one, he actually got, he got very lucky, he got two for one. Okay. And then from there, and that year, and they saw that, they call me the clutch, basically. They say I have the clutch genes because in all races, all, everybody will beat me. Uh -huh. Every short distance race, mile, whatever the distance was, okay. I will say that they, the whole team, everybody will beat me, all the guys. Okay, the 100 meters, you're going to be the, near the, last. <laughs> the 5K, let's say the 10K, anything, any middle distance, right, through the New York Road Runners, they will actually always beat me. And then when the marathon came, Actually, I was the only one to break the three-hour mark last year. For, for the Queen's Distance Runners? For the, yeah, uh, at the New York City Marathon. Oh, for New York City, because I know they have other runners that come very close, 301, 302. Yes, right, yes. Right. So on that year, you know, last year was a very challenging because there was a lot of wind, very oh, cold. Right. So somehow I made it right there, 259.39. Oh, under three. That's the gold like that. standard. Yeah, that's the so gold standard. amazing. You're a working mathematician that could do a sub three. Yes. So were your students uh, impressed or, or did they care? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, they're impressed. Some of them actually run and some of them actually know what running is. And I, I, I always tell them anyway, whether they enjoy it or not, I'm going to go. I'm so excited after yeah, yeah, a run, yeah. oh, you know, I'm going to go share it with them. That's great. Kevin must have been over the moon. He's like, he can see his way of getting on the map here. <laughs> so from there, I think that's where he, uh, Kevin decided to, and from my experience coaching at the university level, he said, you know, you might be a good coach for our long distance runners. Okay. But how did you get the, because uh, Kevin calls you beast. You said we were the, yeah. initially you were the clutch. <laughs> well, so Professor Beast is where he initially started calling me because so from X Men, if you look at X Men, the professor in blue is uh, so he's a professor and he's kind of a beast. And I, they thought that I was a beast the way I train. I train very very hard. I, I will say I can put in some done some challenging runs. For yourself? For myself, I Okay, guess. not necessarily for you, for the team, that the, mm -hmm. for the people you train for. You know, mm -hmm, yours mm -hmm. probably customized yeah. it. Yes. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, when I had Kevin, when he mentioned all these uh, colorful names, mm -hmm. it did remind me of the X-Men. Yeah, yeah he <laughs> has I, names for And I these. think um, 
the Manhattan Neighborhood Network started calling your team the X-Men of running. <laughs> <laughs> so it, Kevin started it with all these nicknames. Yes, and it, and it continues. It's just pretty cool. It's pretty fun to call everybody, to have everybody by your code name. So usually, I think you, you earn your code name to some, to running or through your performances or whenever we have a social gathering, which is practically after every race, then your name will just pop out. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and I, if I remember, Kevin says you're one of the first non-Queens person, you were, because you live in Brooklyn, but you train yes, with the Queens. Yes, I that's currently why. live in Brooklyn Heights, uh, and so now it's hard to go and, and train with them, but we've been training, we follow each other, and actually now it's, uh, my performance has gone up, let's say. It's improved. It has improved because we follow each other, let's say, through Garmin, and we see everybody's miles, and we are, it's just, we have such a team, good, uh, let's say, uh, how can I put it? Camaraderie. Yes, yes. We, we really motivate each other all the oh, time. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So technology plays a big role because you say you're able to follow each other's uh, runs. So mm -hmm. you upload it somewhere, and yeah. you can... Yeah. See, okay, what did uh, the bionic woman do today yeah, that's right. versus mm -hmm. the captain or the Flash, the, the Zen Flash, Master. The Zen Master, yes. So we get to see each other's run and that, that's, that's, that, that motivates me. And so I'll go out and, you know, I'll do my run too. I don't want to fall behind. <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Well, Luciano, describe, you said you're, you're running coach. So... Why would a team member come to you for coaching? What kind of coaching would, can they expect from you? And so the team members that we have are, let's say everybody right now is looking forward towards the marathon. So I will talk, give them some, at least some basic advice first, how to, be, to build up your mileage. A lot of people, a lot of runners think, okay, I'm, in a few months I have a marathon. Let me just start putting in a lot of miles, you know, and that can be counterproductive. You might injure yourself, never get to the race. So I try to go, uh, go ahead and outline a little plan for them to, depending on where they are currently, so that they can get to either meet their goal, get to the line. If they're a little more competitive, then I'll teach them a little bit about the speed work or supplemental exercises, like going to the gym, which is something that I do myself, and things of that nature. You, just, oh, you do cross training. What kind of cross training? I used to lift uh, a lot. Now I just do spinning. Do some spinning, uh -huh. do some basic uh, body weight exercises, okay. things like that. I think they're very, very important. Okay. It's like uh, your muscles are like your shock absorbers, let's okay. say, for your legs. Okay. So you don't want to, you want to have some good shock absorbers. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. All right. So it's, you know, basic stuff, you know, mm -hmm. nothing uh, secret sauce here. No, no, no running is not secret. you learned from the six years ago, when yeah. you, the six years you were doing the training. Yes, it still works. Yeah. And okay. Athletically, you've already done a sub three for New York. Mm -hmm. Are there future challenges you have for yourself, athletically speaking? Oh, yes, I, I really love the marathon. Um, I actually wasn't really a long distance runner, but I just came into loving the, the distance now. And I want to keep progressing. Let's say I want to do a sub 250 this year, around 250. And New York? Yeah, New York, which is a little bit ag aggressive almost. I'm right there. I know I can do two, like 251, 252, but 250, a sub 250, I might have to put in a little bit of effort. I went to Boston also this year. You ran Boston? Yes, I did. Also 259, 55. Okay. We just made it again. Okay. It's, uh, okay, well, Boston is, is hard because of the Heartbreak Hills. Yeah, yeah. But they got, as New York, they got super enthusiastic crowds. Yes, they do. So... Okay. Now you say you, you know you can do 252. What do you use as your predictor? I use some of the the races. For example, I always use the 18 miler to go and run my marathon pace at that uh, the 18 miler that passed two weeks ago. I did uh, two, uh, 157, uh, which is a 6:30 pace. That's 250 for the marathon. And then, so I know I have the endurance. I wanted to check a little bit about my on my speed. So this weekend I did the Bronx 10 miler. I did it almost. At 606 pace, let's say one hour, 50 something okay, seconds. Okay, so we say speed, so you ran that as, as uh, uh, hard. Yes. I mean, not all out. Yes, yes. Okay, it's what about the, uh, the one miler? The, the, you probably did that. Yes, yeah. I did the one miler this year. Actually, I was very, I haven't done a, a, a one miler in many, many years. 
because I, I was afraid of my speed. I get to this is a tough race, and I you know, got under uh, five minutes. Okay. Actually, I got under five minutes twice this year. I was very impressed. I have okay. I have some speed, and I try okay. to harness it now okay. for the longer so distance. And then professionally, you're. Well, you started as an adjunct professor. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Have you moved up to assistant professor? Yeah. Or? Uh, so, typically, so now I'm a. Let's say technically, it's called a lecturer. When someone says a professor, and you are the academic setting, I would think that you are a tenure professor, which is actually very, very, very hard uh, to get, especially at the uh, NYU. But I'm pretty happy with my position. I have a full-time position. What I'm looking to do professionally is expand my research. Actually, today I published. A, 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 today was the official day that my article uh, was published. It was my first individual uh, paper, and I hope to always have another paper in the pipeline. Is what we say, so that once once is published, you're already waiting for the for oh. the next one to come. So I so want to expand say, my research. So this one only has your name on it. Is yeah, that that's different? right. That's what's the name of the paper? Uh, governing equations for the fractional uh, quantum Hall effect. Well, what that's a name for? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a mouthful. Well, yeah. I guess uh, to get tenure, I guess the the, the old saying was uh, publish or perish. I guess that's publish still, or perish. Yeah. It still pertains. It's it's important, but uh, I will say that NYU, you need to be at least a, a, a world class researcher. World class researcher. Okay. Yes. But having you know, continue to have good mentors. It's probably still important. Of good collaborators. Yes. That's so. That's what I am working on now. Extending now that I have a paper and have more research problems, I will try to extend uh, my network of collaborators. Oh, NYU, of course, they're associated mm -hmm. with the Current Institute. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's a world class institution. Yes. And uh, so you're in. Uh, not I'm exactly in the, in the neighborhood, but it's I'm the in the same, right place. <laughs> it's the same. It'll probably the right merge place. at some point. Yes. Maybe. Well, yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So, is there anything else that uh, you want to cover that we didn't have, get a chance to cover? I would like to uh, say hello to all my students, you know, study, don't slack off. And I would like to say hello to my, my lady, the boss. And thank you for QDR for all the support and all the, the friendship. Well, thank excellent. You. Well, you know, on that note, mm -hmm. thank you for coming in. Thank you. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. <laughs>